Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, 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 Adada Kalkihi wa Rida Nafsihi, wa Zinatul Arshihi wa Midada Kalimatihi, wa Muntaha Ilmihi wa Jamia Masha, wa Kalaka, wa Dara, wa Bara. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa Shahadatul Rahman Ibrahim, Al Malakul Kudus, Al Aziz Al Hakim. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu rahkuhu la sharika la Lahul muk wa lahul hamd Yuhyi wa yumit Yadihil khayr wa huwa ala kulli shaykin qadir Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Arsaluhu bil huda wa din al-haq Nidhiruhu ala din kullihi Wa la ukariha al-mushmihun أما بعد فيقول الله تعالى في كتابه يا أيها الناس إن قلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وكبائل لي تعرف إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم قدير صدق الله العظيم والحمد لله we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى the Lord of the world, and send peace and blessings upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I advise you, Ikhwan, I advise you, brothers and sisters, to have taqwa of Allah. We seek him be taqwa Allah. Have God consciousness, have reverence, have fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala by staying away from his prohibitions and carrying out his obligations. Walhamdulillah, walhamdulillah, after 20 some odd years in calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was put in a position by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come back to Mecca after the persecution, after the slander, after the wars, after the assassination attempts, after all of that, and Allah granted him a, a clear victory. And it happened in such a way where very little bloodshed took place. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered Mecca, he told the Meccans, the Quraysh, La that there is no blemish on you this day. In other words, everything all of the hostility, all of the negativity, all of the bloodshed, all of the slander, all of the undermining, all of those things are forgiven you. And the people of Mecca embraced Islam, including many of his arch enemies. So the Quraysh, for the most part, were new Muslims. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered the Kaaba and purified it of all of the idols and false gods contained therein, him along with Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded Bilal to stand on top of the Kaaba and call the Adhan. He commanded Bilal to stand on top of the Kaaba and call the Adhan. And when this was taking place, some of these new Muslims in Mecca had a conversation. One of them said, I'm glad my father's not alive to see this day. 
Couldn't Muhammad find anyone else other than this black crow to call to prayer? Abu Sufyan, a new Muslim himself, was in this conversation. You know his history, he fought against Islam for a long time. He's Muslim, this is his first day of Islam. And he said, I have no comment about this. You want Allah revealing anything negative about me? It's my own words, paraphrasing what he said. <laughs> Allah, in fact, revealed something about that conversation that day. Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind. Inna kalaka nakum min dhakrin wa'unta. Verily we created you from a male and a female. Wa ja'awakum shu'uban wa kabadila. And we made you into nations and tribes. Li ta'arrafu. So that you may know one another. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. Verily the most honorable of you to Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. Inna Allah alimun khabir. And indeed Allah is all knowing, all aware. All aware of what you're saying. How you feel. Interestingly enough, subhanAllah, Bilal ibn Rabah wasn't the only mu'adhan of the Prophet He was not the only caller to the prayer that the Prophet But nevertheless, he was the first one to call the Adhan in Medina and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's master. One of the holiest masters on the face of the earth, one of the holiest places. This incident represents the first call to prayer in Masjid al haram the sacred Masjid in Mecca. He allowed the first one to call the Adhan there. And he was the first one to call the Adhan at Masjid al-Aqsa during Umar ibn al-Khattab's time. Bilal ibn Rabah. Alhamdulillah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called those new Muslims who had this conversation and made disparaging remarks about one of the most elite of the Sahaba. He called them and he asked them, did you say such and such and so and so? And they admitted to it. They said yes. And then he mentioned this ayat from Surah Al Hujurat, the 49th chapter, the 13th verse of the Quran. That's the Surah Al Nuzul. That's the reason why that verse was revealed. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, the Rabbina Ami, Wafdu Salatu Atamu Tasmi, Ala Sayyidina Muhammad in Wa'ala Alihi wa Sahihi Ajma'in, Wa Radi Allah Ta'ala and Sadi to Tabi'in, Wa Ulama and Amadin, Wa Ahimatu Arabat and Mustahidin, and the Kodidim in a Yomi Din. Amma Ba'ad. Ya, 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 I advise you, O oh believers, to have fear, to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, I remember decades ago, every time I heard that verse being recited, every time, every time I heard that verse being recited, the context that the verse was being mentioned in was to negate, to erase culture, to erase identity. 
it will always be mentioned in the context of brothers and sisters. There is no black, black. There is no white. There's only Islam. Yeah, you have the, yeah, you have Nas. All mankind, etc., etc., etc. Verily, the most honorable of you in the sight of Allah is He who has the most taqwa. Brothers and sisters, we don't discuss racial issues. That's not what that verse is saying. The verse is actually saying the opposite. In every book of Quranic commentary, every book of Tafsir will affirm this. This is why it's extremely important that we move away from personalities and get back to the scripture, get back to the text. Many people quote the Quran, quote the Sunnah, and they say the words, they're calling it, but they, what they mean by their quote is opposite than what it's intended. It is like the Quranic, the first deviant group in Islam to come out of Islam, to come out of Aqla Sunnah wal Jamaat. They, they made a slogan out of a verse of Quran. Only Allah can judge. The, uh, only Allah, the hukum is only for Allah. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, Karam Allahu wa Chahu wa Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Kalimatul Haq. The words you're saying is true. Well, you read the we have to. But what you intend by those words is false. We have to be people that stay away from that. Speaking true words, quoting the, the Quran, quoting the Sunnah, quoting in our scholars, quoting our scholars, but how we intend to use those words, how we intend to act upon those words, what we are trying to encourage by those words are other than what the author intended. We have to be very careful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna kalakanakum min dhakarin wa unta. Verily, we created you from a male and a female. He didn't name all these thousand and one genders that we have now. A male and a female. Period. Not non-gender, non-binary, not none of that. Male and a female. No Muslim would run around saying, no righteous Muslim would run around saying, I'm not male or female. No one would say that. Why? Because it's obvious, it's clear, male or female. Well, some people are confused about that, but Muslims are not. No, righteous Muslims are not. Pop Muslims may be confused. Pop culture status quo Muslims may be a little foggy on that issue. They may not be clear on it. But Muslims are clear on it. Male, female, period. Well, Ja'ala kum sha'uba wa kabayla. And we made you, we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the royal we. Gotta, you know, we live in our crazy times. I remember mentioning this verse on the radio program, and a five percent of called me up and said, You just proved from your own book that the black man is God. Because you said we, and we is plural. So God is not one. I said, brother, it's a royal we. Even English has a royal we in it. Anytime somebody of authority speaks, they say we did such and such. He's a king, he's a president, he's not two, three people. It's, it's, in English is called a royal we. People in authority, people that have power, use the, 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 the plural to indicate themselves. And the Arabic has the same three, the same, uh, the same concept. So knock it off. You God, but you got to go to the bathroom more than I do. You God, you said the white man is the devil, and the white man run everything, but you in jail, but you God. It doesn't make no sense. Sometimes we have to use our intellect. And we made you into nations and tribes. Who did it? A mad scientist? The evil white man? No, Allah made you sha'uba wa qaba'ila. Nations and tribes. So it's not for you to undo, to undermine, to erase, to minimize what Allah did. See, we have this knee-jerk knee reaction to things. Because we live in a racist society and there's a permanent class at the at the top, a permanent class at the bottom, and we try to get away from that, so we go to the other extreme. 
we know we nullify what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. We have to be careful for that. Even us, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Room that from amongst his signs, the differences in your languages and your tongue and your colors. So let's not let's be careful of jumping from one extreme to the next. Allah made us into different families, smaller ethnic group and larger groups. In the Akramakum in the light at lead to our food so that you may know. And this is the heart of the verse. So that you may know yourself and you may know other than yourself. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radhi Allah ta'ala anhu that you can find in Tarmidhi. And this hadith is mentioned in Tafsir ibn Kathir in explanation of so that you may know where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تَعَلِّمُوا مِنْ أَنْسَابِكُمْ مَا تَسِدُونَ بِهِ أَرْحَمُكُمْ Learn your own lineage. Go back in your family tree as far as possible. Learn about your family. Have knowledge about yourself. That's a good thing. That's not racism. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about al-Asabiyyah explicitly. Is it from um, Al Asabiyah that a person loves his people? He was asked that explicitly. And he said, No, laugh. That, but it is from Al Asabiyah racism, tribalism, extreme, over the, over the top brotherhood, right? It is from Al Asabiyah. That a person helps his people in wrongdoing. That's al Asabiyah. But just loving your people, that's natural. If this were one of the larger masjids, with a whole lot of different ethnic groups in it, and the Pakistanis, after Jumu'ah or after the event, were off talking to each other, and the Bangladeshis was off talking to each other, and the Algerians were talking to each other, etc., etc., etc. You shouldn't feel offended. That's natural. They speak a common language. They have a common culture. A lot of us black people get offended because we try to erase our stuff. We want to be accepted by everyone else, but we don't care about each other, which is the extreme opposite of racism. Most human beings have to deal with the problem of asabia, racism, you know, having chipper. Right? Looking down on other people. Right? We have the exact opposite of that. We elevate everyone else and we look down on ourselves. The Africans that are still on the continent don't even have that problem. All of this stuff is a disease. So it's nothing wrong. Don't censor someone, you know, oh, look at them over there. All oh, the Arabs talking to them. That's just natural. If we were all black in here, and we were all from different cities, and the clip bar ended, what's going to happen naturally? The people that's from the one part of town, they're all going to be kicking it with each other. And the people that's from the other part of town, they're going to be talking to each other. That's natural. That's human. That's not sinful. A lot of our best definitions are different than what Allah and His Messenger have revealed. Yes, Sheikh. Yes, Sheikh. Yes, Lead to Arafu so that you will know. Everyone is a human, Allah protected right that you know who you are. They call it Hipsu Nessa, the preservation of lineage. But just because you love your people, just because you're connected with your people, in the Allahi at the that should not go or transgress where you or I or they or them think they're better than someone else. No. Verily the most honorable, verily the most noble 
of you to Allah is one who has the most power. And only Allah knows who has that. Inna Allah alimun khabir. And Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts from all sorts of al racism, tribalism, and all of these other blameworthy diseases of the heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts of self-hatred and self-humiliation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts from Uju and Kibla and conceit and arrogance. We're bena tina fi dunya hasana wa fila akhirati hasana wa kina adab and naar. Allahumma tasana wa min kasana wa tabrati wa dawa jalali wa akwaya. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi wa bila